Millwright has a feature to make it easy to engrave a sequence of numbers, such as to make rulers, dials, gauges, or protractors. At the drawing page, click the Draw button and select the Text option. Then select the option to create an array of text values. This will bring up a data entry screen where you can enter the value to increment. In this example, I'll start with a value of 50. The format for this text is the same as with serial numbers. Specifically, you can put text in front of the value and text after the value. I'll put a degree symbol after the text. One way to get the degree symbol is to press the control key, which brings up a menu at the bottom of the screen. That menu shows that one of the options is to insert a character using the character map. So I press control I to insert a character from the character map and pick the degree symbol. I will specify an increment value of 10. When I press the OK button, Millwright lets me know that it just created the text item and the next step for me is to place the repeat icon, which is going to create the array. Although the repeat icon does not have to be located where the array is, the default is for the repeat icon to be at the lower left corner of the first item in the array. I'll put the repeat icon here. Then I get a message to adjust the repeat icon and set the parameters for the text item. When I click the mouse, the cursor automatically moves to the data fields along the right side of the screen. Since I want this to be an array, I'll set the array type to rows and columns. And I'll set it to six rows, one column, with 0.5 units between each row. I now have an array of six items, each one incrementing by 10. I can now move the mouse back into the drawing. The mouse shows a question mark with go back. I click the mouse one time to let Millwright know that I want to go back to the drawing. I then move the mouse over the text item. The parameters for it appear along the right side of the screen. I then move the mouse to those parameters and I can set the height of the letters and I can set the engraving tool parameters. The advantage with creating an array of text with this method is that there are only two items in the drawing to deal with. There is the text item which specifies the font, the size of the letters, the cutting depth and other parameters and there is the repeat icon which specifies the array. If you need to make a change to the array all you do is adjust the text item and or the repeat icon. There's only those two items to deal with. If instead you were to create an array of text so that every item is independent, such as in this case, then if you want to make a change to this type of ruler or array, you have to adjust every text item and line individually. It's also easy to copy and paste this type of array to another drawing or to make a similar but different type of array. For example, I'll select these two items, add them to the clipboard, and then paste them over here. Then I'll set this array to be a circular array. I'll give it six items and I'll rotate the items. If I now switch to the 3D view page, note that the repeat icon and the item that's being repeated do not show up. Only the array shows. These repeat icons will repeat more than text. When you move the mouse over the repeat icon, notice that along the right side of the screen is a data field in which you specify the ID number of the item that you want to repeat. You are not limited to selecting text. You can select geometry or a grouping. 
for example, I'll draw a circle and I'll draw a few lines and I'll draw a rectangle. Then I'll select them and turn them into a grouping. Now I'll click the draw button and select the option to repeat an item. I'll click the data field that specifies the item to repeat and then click the grouping. Then I can specify an array of how about a hollow rectangle. You can also specify an X scale and a Y scale if you want to shrink or enlarge the items. If you want to move the repeat icon, the entire array will move with it. In this case, the handle of the repeat icon is at the lower left corner of the item that's being repeated. If I set it to the center of the item, the repeat icon is now at the center of the item that's being repeated, which makes it easy to place the center of the item at a certain location in the drawing.